despite all of the issues, the Jaguars, you know, pretty much have to win this game uh, to take the division, obviously, but then also make the playoffs. And so in that respect, I got to think he, you know, if there is any hope in him being out there, that he is going to be out there. And then when the spread creeps back up to say five and a half or five, something like that, then I'm going to pounce on the Titans because that is my alternate spread of the week. It is Titans minus half a point. I think Tennessee, even with nothing to play for, that is who I like in this matchup. I believe in Mike Brabel. I believe in this coaching staff to do one more great thing. That's what I like in this spot. And, you know, one of the things, too, is that, look, if this is a Ryan Tannehill game, I am just fine with that. DeAndre Hopkins has a lot of contract incentives and Tannehill can get him the ball. I don't think it's going to be this massive quarterback drop off as far as that's concerned. I think the Titans are going to win this thing outright, Paul. I love the Ravens in this spot. Uh, I know we talked about the different scenarios, but I do think John Harbaugh and the history and the rivalry that they have with the Steelers, any chance they can get to eliminate them, Tomlin never had a losing season and he somehow has his team in position to avoid it again. It's crazy. Uh, but I just think Tyler Huntley is a pretty good uh, backup quarterback. We obviously have seen him quite a bit last year and I trust him. He fits the system well. I don't think it's, you know, a huge change in terms of learning the offense and like, oh, you've got a totally different quarterback. Like he's very similar in terms of what Lamar does. So I like this. Um, I think you're getting value on the Ravens. It's one of my favorite picks. And when you're talking about the, the Texans defense, I think they're going to play really well here. Like I've got some real hope in them, especially when it comes to containing the ground attack for Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. Cause that's what you think of when it comes to the Colts offense, right? Like it's Jonathan Taylor and Moss and all of that. Well, defensive success rate for the Texans rushing defense it's fourth highest 0.5 yards before contact per carry. That's number one in the NFL 3.3 yards per carry allowed. That's number two. So Jonathan Taylor's prop is set at 72 and a half rushing yards. Give me the under in that one. I am quite confident that the Texans defense will show up in this ball game. It is again, unfortunately, one of my <laughs> favorite prop bets of the week in that last time these two teams Last time these two yes. teams played, it was uh, Nico Collins getting seven catches for 146 yards based on how the Colts have consistently played defense under Gus Bradley. They don't move away from cover three and zone coverage in general. But we've also seen the opportunity increase now the last three starts he's made with C.J. Stroud and without Tank Dell in that he's seen a 30% target share in that game, the ninth most among all receivers in the league. He's been targeted on 36% of his routes for 117 yards per game and 4.81 yards per route run. Only Tyreek Hill is actually averaging more yards per route run instead in those contests. So I think it's a great spot for Neil Collins. And the way I'm viewing the game, I also bet the Texans early on. Um, I got them at, at one. The line continues to increase. But the way we have to view it is that we need to negate Jonathan Taylor entirely. Since this Texas defense out of their bye, they found their identity. All they do is stuff the run, and they have stuffed some of the best running backs in the league. But you look at success rate, their first in success rate. You look at yards per carry, a 2.9 yards per carry allowed to opposing running backs in that time, a stretch of seven full games. And so we don't think Taylor can have success on the ground at all in this spot. And then it comes down to a quarterback matchup, albeit in Indianapolis, but between C.J. Stroud and Gardner Minshew, that's the case. We saw just enough where C.J. Stroud was perfectly healthy last week, not only completing over 80% of his passes within nine yards of the line of scrimmage, as they weren't asked to do anything sexy. They didn't need C.J. Stroud to take the top off the Titans. But even when Tennessee got pressure last week, C.J. Stroud went five of seven as well. So I think he's at full strength, and that's really all we need in this game. I wish... Noah Brown was out there. I wish Robert Woods was available to help to chip in. I'm really not sure we're going to get those guys in this game, but I think the ancillary pieces still between Devin Singletary and Dalton Schultz are enough to get the Texans over in this game. I'm looking at this Dolphins defense, and I'm getting more and more impressed by the minute. Like, when Jalen Ramsey came back since returning in Week 8, defensive success rate is ninth highest at 57%, and... 
that matters here. You know, this Vic Fangio coach defense, it tends to get better over time. Sometimes they get off to rocky starts, but suddenly I think if Josh Allen is not necessarily a concern and they're going to run a good bit more 12 personnel, Buffalo does that this is a very winnable game, at least on the defensive side. Now, offensively, yeah, a lot of banged up guys, a lot of questions there, but I do wonder if this is just naturally a lower scoring game where most anything can happen with, say, like one random turnover or something like that. I do like the case that Joe's made for the Bears and John Daigle just made for the Bears on our show. Um, the Bears have been playing well. Um, I was looking at DJ Moore and Justin Fields props here. Joe Barry is most likely fired soon as the Packers defense is absolutely awful. 28th defensive DVOA. Joe Barry was here in Washington. Didn't like him then. Don't like him now. Uh, <laughs> and you can see by the performance. Don't like him in the, the future. <laughs> Just how bad. Yeah. Why are you still a coach in this league? I'm not sure. The other thing is Packers injury report. Whoo, that thing is long. 21 players on the injury report. Packers, are they going to lose at home in the final game of the season with a playoff berth on the line? I think they could. I don't I don't have a whole lot of faith. I know Jordan Love's been playing well, but uh, I think this is a bear spot, and I'd be looking at Fields. Uh, everyone's been talking about the narrative around Fields, too. I, I think Fields and more could have a field day. See what I did there? I have the Ravens as a slightly better team, but most people who do advanced metrics still have the 49ers as the slightly better team. And my guess is that in a Super Bowl rematch, the 49ers would actually be favored despite losing the first game. And I would recommend going with the Ravens, but the two teams are pretty close They're closer together than that game showed. There were a lot of weird bounces of the ball, turnovers. Mm -hmm. Purdy's not going to turn the ball over again four times or whatever it was. If these two teams play a rematch, they're closer than that. And so it would be a great, it would be a historic game between two teams having historically great seasons. That being said, there's more than a 50-50 chance that we don't get there. Right? Like even my numbers, which have these teams stronger than anyone else has them, says it's more likely that we don't get this rematch than that we do. That somebody knocks off one of these teams on the way to the Super Bowl. 